Good morning, this is Dr. McDaniel. I'm a board certified obstetrician gynecologist in New York City, and I'm bringing to you all things health related for women. Thank you for joining me at the corner today. I'm trying out a new forum because I'm actually at Starbucks. I don't know if you can hear the background, but I'm at the local Starbucks this morning having a cappuccino, and I decided. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to do a um, presentation, get my morning started off right. So uh, let's see, if you enjoy the content, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and follow buttons, and uh, give me some feedback on what you enjoyed, if you had any questions, or if you have ideas for new topics. I did get one viewer with an idea for a new topic, and I'll have to, to do that presentation maybe in a week or two go through the questions again and uh, do the presentation on her, her um, suggestion. So that'll be coming soon, a viewer topic. But today is part two on um, the resistant uh, vaginal yeast infections. So obviously I don't know if anyone who, everyone who's watching this presentation actually saw the very first presentation, but uh, the part one, us about yeast infections. We know yeast infections are the bane of existence for a lot of women. And um, the big deal with yeast infections is that they're becoming more and more resistant to the medications we have available. And that's because uh, traditionally, or I guess I should say historically, uh, historically 97% of yeast infections were susceptible to um, I'm sorry, were our uh, candidiasis, I'll, um, hold on a second. 97% uh, of yeast infections were due to Canada albicans. So Canada albicans historically it was responsible uh, or the source of 97% of vaginal yeast infections or vulvovaginal candidiasis. Now, as time has gone on around 15 years ago or so, the research came out that approximately 92% of yeast infections were due to Canada albicans. And as recently as around three years ago, so um, this is 2022, so around 2018, 2019, it wasn't that 92% of vaginal yeast infections were due to Canada albicans. It was more like um, about 80 to 85% of vaginal yeast infections are due to Canada albicans. So as you can see, as time is going on, more and more fungal or yeast infections are not due to the Canada albicans. We went down from 97 all the way down to 80 now. And I'm sure as time goes on, we'll see more and more yeast infections that are not due to Canada albicans. Well, you may ask, why is that a big deal? Who cares what type uh, fungus is causing the yeast infections. Yeast infections are yeast infections, but that's actually not true because all of the medications to treat, to kill off, and to clear up the yeast infections, all of them are directed at Canada albicans. All of the over-the-counter preparations, the insert creams, monostat, um, vagistat, all of those, myconazole, uh, clotrimazole, all of those are directed at killing Canada albicans, they're not directed at killing other forms of vaginal yeast infections because those were very, very, fairly rare. Well, the only medication we had available was not over the counter, it was prescription only that could address the other, what used to be 3% and is now approximately 20% vaginal yeast infections was terconazole, and that went by the trade name Terazole. Terconazole is a vaginal insert cream or suppository or ovule and they came and it comes in two flavors the once night for seven nights and the once night for three nights it's the exact same medication just differing constant excuse me differing concentrations so that you can uh, clear up the infection more rapidly so the candida albicans is still responsible for the majority of vaginal yeast infections, but it's becoming less and less so. What I call the minor players are uh, 
candida prapsilosis, Tori lepsis labrata, and um, another one that has been rising to the forefront. Um, there's a fourth one. Obviously, I did not write down what I was going to say for today because I know it fairly well. Uh, but there is a fourth one that um, is fairly common. So it's Prapsilosis glabrata, uh, Torilepsis, and um, there's a fourth one. If I think of it, I will mention it later. Not that most people really care, but it's just how I am. Got to get those details in. So the catch, of course, is these are vaginal yeast infections that do not respond to the traditional medications that we have available be they over the counter or the prescription. A lot of people who have had yeast infections are very familiar with Diflucan or Fluconazole, Fluconazole being the generic and Diflucan being the trade name. And they're both little pink pills. You take one, one pink pill, one time, one day, one dose, and that's it. So the catch, of course, is now approximately 20%, and I feel slowly but surely even more of vaginal yeast infections are not going to respond to that little pink pill. Now, if you go to see your gynecologist, get a vaginal culture done, um, the catch is if you just get a regular vaginal culture done, most of them will just say yeast or candidal strains um, and that's it. So you'll be told that you had a yeast infection and that it's been appropriately treated if you did the diflucan or fluconazole. However, if you don't get someone to do the test to break it down, you're not going to necessarily be appropriately treated if they're not aware that it's not a candida albicans, that it's one of the other minor players, laboratory lepsis, prapsilosis, and so on and so forth. So the catch is if you've had persistent or recurrent vaginal yeast infections, Diflucan seems to help a teeny bit or a little bit, but it's still not completely cleared up. Then you want to make sure that you ask them, are they checking for non-albicans yeast strains? Because if they're not, then obviously you'll need uh, a medication, either the Terrazol or what I'm going to speak about briefly is a new medication that's come to the market. And... Um, if they have not done the breakdown, they can either just prescribe you the, the additional the terazol or this new medication, or you can get tested to see if it's actually a, an additional or a non-primary uh, strain of yeast, or even if it's not yeast, if it's a, a form of bacteria. So the new medication that's come out is called Brexifen, and the generic for it is Ebrexifunger. It's also a one-day treatment, but unlike diflucan or fluconazole, it works a one-time, one-day, one-tab, one-dose treatment. It's two tabs twice a day for one day. So it's still one day. It's just you have to take it twice a day, and it ends up being four tablets. But that's the least of your concerns if you're getting rid of a resistant vaginal yeast infection. So the Brexifim is what we call a non-azole medication, and that's uh, because all of the medications that address candida albicans are called azoles. If you notice, it was um, myconazole, clotrimazole, all of them are azoles at the end. Diflucan, fluconazole, it's all, they're all azoles. So they're all directed at treating candida albicans. So if the medication you're taking has A-Z-O-L-E at the end of it, then it's only going to address one type of vaginal yeast, which is the albicans. It's not going to address the other 20% that are resistant now to azole or, or um, resistant to the traditional routine treatment. And these medications, this new category, is the first in class, which means it's the first time that this medication has been available on the market in its whole class. It's called a triterpenoid. So it's a new antifungal. And it um, has been proven to completely clear up the non azole responding vaginal yeast infections, all the signs, all the symptoms, itching, burning, swelling, um, discomfort, irritation, usually within three to seven days, but at the outside, 25 days. And let's see, it does come with a coupon. So you can go on their website, Brexifem, get the coupon. And because it's a 
brand. Obviously, there is a generic. It just came out this year. It's um, at the least, it's going to be thirty dollars, which I think is a small amount of money to pay if you've been just plagued with the resistant vaginal yeast. Just uh, won't go away. So needless to say, this medication, just like diphenylconazole, are both uh, restricted for pregnancy. So you're not supposed to take them if you're pregnant or um, if you've had it once and you have any kind of weird reaction, then you're supposed to avoid it because if it is a sensitivity or an allergy, it will get worse th with repeated uh, exposure. And let's see, there's very few uh, potential side effects with it. It's the usual 2% uh, or more of people are always going to have a problem with the medication or they're going to uh, report that they had a problem and it potentially it was coincidental. Uh, you were going to have a reaction or an issue and then you happen to take the medication around the same time frame, so you blame it on medication. But it's the usual list of suspects. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, cramping, and dizziness. Those are always like the major players that can potentially be an issue with any medication that you take. And just for a little bit of detail, the way it works is that it breaks down the protective shell of the fungus. So all fungi have a shell. It breaks down uh, part of the mechanisms that maintain that shell. The enzyme is called um, glucan synthase. And since it breaks up that shell, it breaks up the ability for the yeast of the fungus to produce its protective shell. Of course, since that shell is broken up, it's susceptible and it dies and um, it works fairly quickly. You can take it with or without food. So I think that's pretty much it. It's called Brexafen. It's a Brexafen drip is the generic. Brexafen is the brand. Um, a lot of the pharmacies do not like carrying brands at all. They only like to carry generics. Apparently that's because the pharmacies get paid more when they dispense a generic versus a brand. Um, I found that out years ago trying to prescribe um, easier, more effective medications that were brands that come with coupons. So it makes them reasonable. Pharmacies, a lot of patients were just told um, we don't dispense brands or we don't have that in stock. We'd have to order it. It's going to be a week. So they make it very difficult. If you're here in the New York uh, metropolitan area, Manhattan and the surrounding um, um, district, I'm losing my speech today. I, I am drinking coffee, but it doesn't seem to be helping. Sorry, I had a late night last night. I got about four hours of sleep. Um, if you're in any of the boroughs, Queens, Bronx, blah, 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 Staten Island, you can have your physician, your gynecologist, order the Brexifim through the capsule. Capsule delivers to all of New York City, including all the boroughs, and they also have started delivering to a few areas in New Jersey. I'm sure they deliver to like Jersey City and such areas that are close by, but capsule is really good. I, I don't work for capsule. I don't get any money for capsule, but I've been prescribing brands like this to capsule because they automatically apply the coupon. If there's any kind of prior authorization, which usually there isn't, but if that is an issue, they'll do it. So they make it very, very easy for you to get specialized prescriptions such as this one at, a de at the most uh, economical price. And they deliver to wherever you are as long as you're in these uh, the New York City boroughs or a couple of cities in New Jersey. And they'll deliver to work if you work here, you don't live here or to your home, anywhere, as long as the office is not a P.O. box. So Capsule Pharmacy is awesome for this prescription, Brexifem, a new or what we call a novel treatment for resistant recurrent yeast infections that don't respond to diphenylconazole or nor to the over-the-counter medications. Sorry for the long presentation. I'm trying to make this short and quick. I know a lot of people prefer five to seven minute presentations, but I hate to break something up into two parts that doesn't, to me, feel like it needs to be broken up into two parts, it could be done in one. So uh, thanks for joining me. Please again, hit the like, subscribe and follow buttons. Uh, check out the YouTube channel because they're all chronologically listed and I have a whole bunch of playlists for the YouTube channel. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Bye.